Hi, my name is Margret. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to constructors. Java is an extensible language. You can create your own types by declaring new classes. Once you have declared a new class, you can create variables of the type. You can also create instances of a given type using the new operator in combination with the constructor. It is the job of the constructor to initialize the new object. So at this point, I want to have a closer look at constructors. Java allows us to declare our own constructors. Here is an example, public my class and then a parameter. So here, public, the most permissive access modifier that allows other classes to access the constructor and to use it to create new instances of my type. Notice there is no return type specified, even not void. This is very important. If a return type was specified, Java would no longer recognize it as the constructor. It would consider it to be a method. That's something you want to avoid. Now here is the name of my constructor. Notice the uppercase M of my class. The reason my constructor name is Pascal cased is because constructor names always match the class names and class names are Pascal cased. So are constructor names. Now here at the end, you have the parameter list. In this example, it includes one single parameter consisting of a type and a name. Just a reminder, parameters are special kinds of variables and parameter declarations follow the same pattern that we see for all Java variables, which is type, name. Let's have a look at an example. Here, I have a constructor, public, circle, and one parameter. The name is R, the type is double. And I use my R to initialize the field radius. It is the job of constructors to initialize the instance. In this case, my constructor had one parameter, but it could also have multiple parameters. For example, in the case of rectangle. Once again, notice, no return type. Uppercase R, because the name rectangle from my constructor matches the name rectangle from my class. In this case, I have two parameters, int l and int w, and I'm using those two parameters to initialize my two fields, length and width. If no constructor is declared, Java provides a parameterless default constructor, and the default constructor initializes all of the fields with its default value. For a numeric primitive type, as well as for a character, the default value is zero. For Boolean, the default value is false. For all reference types, the default value is null. Now let's have a look on how to create a new object. When you create a new object, you're using the new operator and a constructor call. The new operator allocates the memory for the new object. It allocates just the right size that is required for the specific object that is created. The constructor call initializes the new object at the time of creation. Constructors initialize, they give a value to the fields, but they can only be called when the new object is created. If you want to change the field values later on, you can no longer use a constructor. You need a method, for example, a setter 
or another method that changes field values. Also notice that in my constructor call I specify an argument and arguments do not specify a type so this is different from the parameter in our constructor declaration. First in my constructor declaration I specified what type needs to be passed here in my constructor call I just pass the argument of the appropriate value the type is no longer mentioned. So let's look at some examples. Here I have scanner input this is a variable called input of type scanner and we are assigning a new scanner instance. The new scanner instance is created with a new operator followed by a constructor call. Notice here my constructor scanner has the same name as the type which is the class name. So here I specify a type it has no parentheses on the right side I call the constructor. It looks like the type followed by an argument list, but this is the name of the constructor. When I pass the argument, I no longer specify the type, I just specify a value of the appropriate type. Let's look at another example. Here is the constructor declaration we looked at before. It has one parameter of type double called R and R my parameter is used to initialize the field radius. Here is the corresponding constructor call. We pass an argument 5.2 which is of type double. Double is no longer mentioned because double was already specified in the parameter declaration. When we call the constructor we just pass an argument of an appropriate type. So here I have my constructor call in combination with the new operator. This creates a new object on the heap, initializes the radius with 5.2 and returns a reference to that newly created object. We store this reference to the newly created object in a variable called myCircle. The variable is of type circle because we store a reference to a circle object. Here is another example. Once again, we use the constructor declaration we introduced before. This time it is rectangle. We have two parameters declared, both of type integer. We used both parameters to initialize the fields. Now it is your turn. Create an instance of rectangle. Pass the values 3 and 5 as arguments. Then assign the new object to a variable called myRectangle. Pause the video. When you're ready, press continue. Here is an example how you can do that. I'm creating a new instance of rectangle with my new operator and with my constructor call. I'm passing 3 and 5 as arguments to my constructor and I'm assigning the newly created object to a variable called myRectangle and this variable is of type rectangle because it includes a reference to a rectangle object to an instance of type rectangle. This is it for now. See you next time.